He is risen. He is risen indeed. We gather to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you are the creator of the world, the liberator of your people, and the wisdom of the earth. By the resurrection of your Son, Jesus the Christ, free us from our fears, restore us in your image, and unite, ignite us with your light through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. An Easter Gospel from the 28th chapter of Matthew, the first 10 verses. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of our Lord. At this time, we have an Easter. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to confess our feelings. We come with anxiety and sorrow, with hope and expectation. Lord Jesus, we come to the lonely tomb. And we see you stripped, murdered, and deserted. Lord Jesus, we come to the empty tomb. And we see our own death. We see our own tomb. We see our own emptiness. Lord Jesus, we come to the empty tomb. And we remember how we have treated our family, our friends, our neighbors, and you, our Lord. Lord, when we come to the empty tomb, we see a hungry world before us, the pain of starving children, the terror of war, the injustice of those without rights, and we know that we share in these evils. Lord, when we come to the empty tomb, we search inside ourselves and we cannot escape what we are, people caught in selfish love, cold hypocrisy, loneliness, and frustration. Lord Jesus, when we come to the empty tomb, we face you as never before, as the one forgotten, as the one oppressed, as the one pushed aside, as the one left out. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to the empty tomb to confess our guilt, our pain, our emptiness, and to look for hope from you. Children of God, why do you seek the living among the dead? Because we feel guilty. We feel lonely, we feel lost, for we deserted that man. Do not carry your guilt any longer, for he has taken guilt on himself. He has lifted it to the cross. He has buried it in the grave, and he is here among us now. Children of God, why do you seek the living among the dead? Because our wounds are deep. We have torn away from that man. 
we have broken with him and with our fellow men. Do not dwell on your wounds, for he has risen to heal you. He has risen to forgive you. He has risen to change you and bind us all together. Children of God, he is not here. He is risen. Yes, he is risen. He is risen and he is here. Alleluia. 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 At this time, we have our first hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. It is a tape from last year. Children, good morning to you. How are you doing? Raise your right hand if you're doing good. I'm not going to ask you to raise the left hand if you're not doing good. I just want to leave things where you can just raise that right hand because things are going good in spite of what's going on. Well, maybe you're feeling good because there's no school, but you know, sooner or later, you're going to have to make that up. And I want to just share a brief message with you uh, this morning about Jesus being raised from the dead. Uh, you know, his disciples were afraid on that morning because they thought Jesus was dead. And uh, the women went to the tomb and they expected to find Jesus there, dead. And they went with fear, we are told. 
even after the angel had told them that Jesus has been raised from the dead. What I'd like you to do with me this morning is repeat after me something. I'm going to say, Jesus is risen, and I want you to say, he is risen indeed. And we're gonna do that three times. Jesus is risen, he is risen indeed. Jesus is risen, he is risen indeed. Jesus is risen, he is risen indeed. And that, my friends, is the good news. Uh, I don't know about you, but there have been times in my life when I've been afraid. And the good thing we know is that even in the midst of our fear, God is with us, Jesus is with us, and when you have some fears, when there's something you might be afraid of, you should also know that God is with you. One of the symbols of Easter that we use is a butterfly. And you know that uh, a butterfly is something else before it becomes a butterfly. It is a caterpillar. And you know that uh, when the time comes for that uh, caterpillar to uh, become a butterfly, first it spins a cocoon. And it spends some time in that cocoon almost as if it were dead. But then comes that special time when the caterpillar, now becoming a butterfly, comes out of its cocoon, spreads its wings, and flies away. For it has, at that time, a new, different life. And that is the promise that God gives to us in Jesus. So once again, say with me, He is risen, He is risen indeed. And at this, at this time, what I'd like to do is uh, sing a song that I think you know, and we're going to have the whole family come together, and we're going to sing, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. should not perish, but have eternal life. Have a great Easter.
risen indeed. Dear friends in Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Have you ever noted that at first it was the women who were dealing with the reality of Jesus' death? In Matthew, it is Mary Magdalene and a companion who are the first ones to go to the tomb. And their expectations are normal. They are going to visit the place where Jesus has been buried. Perhaps they are going to decorate it with flowers. Perhaps they are going to stand in silence before the stone that encloses the tomb. You can almost hear a conversation going something like this. Well, at least we have our memories. Remember how he fed the multitude? Remember how he healed those who were sick? Remember how he raised some of the followers from the dead? Oh yeah, and, and by the way, I don't know about you, but uh, have you tried to figure out who's going to roll the stone bed? Who's going to move that stone? And then suddenly, Scripture tells us there was an earthquake. Have you ever paid attention to the earthquakes of Good Friday and Easter? <clears throat> we usually associate earthquakes with death and destruction by land and by sea. Matthew, however, points to God's enormous presence and power at work with the earthquakes of Good Friday and Easter Sunday. The earthquake at Jesus' crucifixion brings about the curtain in the temple being torn apart, an indication that in the death of Christ, the separation of God and man was no longer to be. At the tomb, the earthquake shakes loose the stone from the tomb's entrance. The tomb is open for the women and the world. The empty tomb of death is now showing forth Christ's victory. It shows God breaking into our world and breaking through systems that entomb us and walls that divide us. The angel would speak. You are looking for Jesus. He isn't here. He has been raised. And the women run to tell the disciples. And as they go, they encounter Jesus Christ risen from the dead. When the earth shook, when the stone was rolled back, as dead Jesus broke loose from the grip of death, when the crucified one became the resurrected one, it was the first day of a new world of a new life for all, a new life for you, and a new life for me. The resurrection of Jesus changed everything. The truth of God was and is out there for the world to see. God has raised the crucified Jesus from the dead. This day, the day of Easter, is central to our Christian faith. We joyfully celebrate the God who is beyond our imagination and thinking and yet acts in our history. When have we had those aha moments 
when we have sensed the presence of the living Christ, of God with us, perhaps a sunset that we have wished would never end, perhaps the grandeur of the Grand Canyon spread out before us, or the peaks of the Rockies looking down on us from above. Maybe it's been the beauty of family together. Maybe it has been a time of silence. At Easter, we are aware of and captivated by God's amazing grace and power. The dead Jesus has become the living Christ. People, be aware. The presence of Christ is most often found to be real in the midst of difficult, painful, life-shattering experiences. When things are going well, it's not often enough that we recognize the presence of God. But we feel God in those moments when we feel alone, when we feel there is nothing to look forward to. In our despair, God gives us hope, a hope that allows us to take the next step or the next breath. We don't forget Good Friday, but Easter is that time when we recall the miracle of new life for Jesus and for us. God bless you and enjoy the gift of life given to us by the Christ. At this time, we join in our prayers of intercession, the petitions, and Lord, in your mercy, your response as worshipers this morning, hear our prayer. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and all places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of resurrection, from the very beginning you give the church the gift of women as your witnesses, as preachers, teachers, and leaders. Open our ears to their proclamation this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All your creation praises you, Heavenly Father. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and like the other evening, that moon is so beautiful. The galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in the song of nature. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience this unity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We will weep with those who mourn and with those who suffer. Cradle the fearful the suffering and the dying, assure them of your living presence. During this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, lead us to understand that just as Christ is raised from the dead, so also you are with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died, especially this morning, remembering the family and friends of John Knitt. 
Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you, draw, draw us to be with you during our final days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through the risen Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And together, God's people pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing of God. May God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and keep you for today and forever. Amen. Our dismissal this morning will be my saying Christ is risen and you're repeating he is risen indeed three times. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.